Hello everyone, welcome back to the Union Pacific Railroad Evanston subdivision in HO scale. My name is Daryl Cruz, owner and builder of the layout and your host for episode 43 of season 2022. This episode features installing resistors on wheel sets so that all the cars on the layout can be detected by the layout and detected by the dispatchers panel. Resistor wheel sets really can't be seen as you're operating the layout since they're on the axles of all the wheel sets. Uh, but it is very important to the dispatchers so that they can see exactly where the trains are, where they're running and how things are going. Before we get to that though, make sure you like, uh, subscribe, and hit the little bell to uh, make sure you're notified of upcoming videos. A couple of things also first, uh, this Mississippi River Bridge has been sitting in this Tupperware case for over, well about a year exactly, actually almost two years. It was in 2020 that we decided to move and so I packed this up, had of course a styro styrofoam popcorn in there to protect it while we were moving but I finally got it out this week and installed it on the little end scale display I have in the layout room so finally have a little bit of end scale here's a a Cumberland Valley system boxcar was given to me by Matt of Fox Valley models a while back as we operated on the N-Scale Cumberland Valley system of the Reed Brothers. And I kept a, some cars also. I sold a, almost all my N-Scale stuff, but I kept enough so that we could have a train on display on the Mississippi River Bridge. Here's a boxcar, that rail box boxcar. I painted that and decaled it myself about 40 years ago. Now, most of these cars are very old. And uh, some of them a little bit, not quite so old, but they're on display finally in the layout room. I have to say when I put this, I have to put some masonite on the end there yet. I have to say when I put this on there, I made me realize how tiny end scale is. Uh, here's uh, some shelves I also put up. Put the programming track on the shelf it was back on the staging yard which was not very accessible so now i have the programming track there on the shelf have the charging stations there i found some n scale signals so i'm going to be selling some more n scale signals uh, here pretty soon once i check and make sure that they're working and repair their bridges and everything uh, but i'll have a lot of the tools handy so i won't have to be looking under the layout all the time do have to add the masonite on both ends yet uh, but it's kind of a nice little display here on the wall on the uh, stairway that comes downstairs and it's not in the way of operations at all so I was pretty happy with the way that's turning out and I also uh, did some rearranging of lights so instead of track lighting here I put two of the LED uh, lights that I got from Amazon. There's a link in the description. These are outstanding lights. They're very efficient. So those two 40 watt LED lights replaced uh, 12 track lights. So the 12 track lights, each each light takes like 12 and a half watts. So uh, I think it came out to like uh, instead of 240, 240 watts total in this, in these areas, it's only 120. So cut the wattage in half, and it's still the same amount of light. I got a notice from ComEd that I'm using like 30% more electricity this year than last year, and I'm almost certain that's because of all the lights I have installed, and I'm probably down here more than I should be. Uh, so I'm burning more electricity. I'm going to replace all of the rest of the track lights also. So hopefully have a little bit less electrical consumption 
from the lights. All right, uh, resistors on wheel sets. I don't put the resistors on all the wheels, just one wheel set, wheel of each, or one axle of each car. There's different kinds of wheel sets. That first one I just showed you was an Athern, and it has one insulation on one of the wheels. The other side is connected. This is a repeatal. Uh, it's a metal axle, but it's insulated on both wheels, so the metal axle does not is not uh, connected to the rails at all. On the Athern, one wheel is insulated, the other one is not. Now here you have an axle that's not even metal, so there's a lot of different uh, types of wheels that you're going to have that you'll need to address if you're going to be attempting. Uh, putting resistor wheel sets on. It's really easy though. It's a cinch. First thing you need to do is get these surface mount resistors. And I uh, got these from Amazon again. A link is in the description. Very inexpensive. I got like 300 for 15 bucks. You just pull the tape back and they pop right out. They're very small. And each one is uh, 10k ohms. All right, and then I just get a piece of plastic here. I, this is a, a piece of plastic that some larger resistors came in. And uh, you also need some uh, electric paint. This is paint that when it dries, conducts electricity. Also from Amazon, the uh, link is in the description. And uh, if I, it was a little difficult to do these because I had the camera on the tripod I'm trying to figure out exactly how to do it. And so this is not the usual angle that I work at, but it still works. So also need a tweezers. You have to find your own, but the best is definitely get a good tweezers. And then of course, super glue. For super glue, the cheaper the super glue, the better. I found that cheap super glue works much better than more expensive modeling super glue. At least it dries faster. And uh, you definitely want something that's quick drying. All right, here I got this uh, zoomed in and focused. So I use a toothpick to just take a small drop of super glue and put it on the axle near the wheel set that's insulated. And then you just plop a resistor down on top of it and then use another toothpick. This one's got black paint on it already. Now I actually put a little bit more super glue on here than I really needed. That's why I kind of globbed a little bit. If you put too much super glue on it, it will cause a problem because some of the glue will go up and over and on top of the resistor and the resistor has uh, two little metal strips at the ends that you will use to con to flow the conductivity from the resistor onto the axle and onto the wheel um, that one's pretty good though and here I am putting it on the plastic wheel set as you hold the one wheel with my thumb or finger and then place it on uh, the axle. Right, here's the repeato. That insulated one is a Wathers car. Now this repeato wheels has a little bit of a ridge so you're not it's not going to be laying flat on the on the axle. It's going to be kind of at an angle. And now usually it goes on easier than this. I kind of had to mess around with a little bit and it was mainly because I was kind of working at an odd angle with a camera there on the tripod. All right, but look closely at this. It's not on there flat. It's on there at a little bit of an angle. I right, can see that because there's a ridge. Uh, but that's still important to get it as close to the wheel set, at, as close to the wheel as possible because you're going to want to flow paint uh, from the resistor onto uh, the back of the wheel. Alright, then you take some of the uh, resist the, uh, the electric 
paint, elect, electric conducting paint. And then again, I just use a toothpick and you touch the metal of the end of the resistor and flow the paint onto uh, the axle. So you go from one metal strip to the axle and then from the other metal end to the back of the wheel. And the main thing is that you don't have the two globs of paint touching each other. There's got to be a gap. Now I got really close on this one, but if you look closely there is a gap between the two. The two globs of paint are not touching each other. And now this is the uh, repeatal one. So you have to go from the metal plate on the end of it onto the axle and then from the back of the wheel to the other end. Now you don't want to put too much, if you put too much paint on the that second glob of paint you might short out the axle. Now for the repeatal since uh, both wheels are insulated from the axle you have to go to the other wheel and glob some paint on there and make sure that uh, the axle conducts to the wheel. And so there you have it where it conducts from the wheel to the axle and then from the axle to the resistor and then from the resistor to the other uh, wheel. These, again these are 10k ohm. Um, you can do 15 15K, I've seen some uh, 20, 20K, um, and there are uh, one quarter watt resistors. They do not really add to the current much at all. Now this, since it has a plastic axle for this one, the glob for the axle has to go continuously all the way along the axle. So it has to go from the end of the resistor and continually along the axle to the other wheel set. So basically you want electricity conducting from one wheel to the other wheel with the resistor in between. Alright, let's test it out. See if it works. Now here we have a train that does not have any uh, conducting wheel sets. So this only shows up for the locomotives and none of the cars have any resistors on them. And uh, why this is important to have resistor wheel sets on all the cars, you can see I have a little insert of the uh, panel and you can see the lights that light up, it shows that it's occupied. So it started out on the right, the little dot there it went into the control point, now the control point is lit up. And then as it goes on the other side of the signals, the other, the third. So it shows it as being on all three. But now as the locomotive goes out of the control point, the control point goes dark. So this is where it gets confusing for the dispatcher if you don't have conducting wheel sets on all the cars. It shows up on the dispatcher's panel where the locomotives are. The lead locomotives is the dot on the left and the trailing DPU is the dot on the right. But none of the cars are uh, conducting at all. And so they do not show up on the control point. So as the conductors, as the dispatcher is looking at this, unless he's been watching the whole time, it's going to be confusing exactly where the train is. Is this two trains? Is this one train? And it just gets a little confusing, not only to the dispatcher, but to the software also. And right, now as the DPU gets into the control point, it lights up again. And then the, uh, uh, the light on the right goes dark. And then as the DPU comes out of the control point, and that light goes out on the control point. Now there is usually a delay, a 
usually you build in a delay on the um, detector going out. Usually it's about a four or five second delay. And that's important in case you have some uh, little dirty, uh, some wheels get dirty and so forth. If it loses conductivity, you don't have the light going uh, off and on. So here we have another one coming the other direction. This one does have the conducting wheel sets. All right, so we are on the uh, block at Curvo, went into the control point, so that's lit up. And now the lead units go into the next block and it lights up. And now as the lead units come out of the control point, since all the wheels uh, of the cars, and I should say all the wheels by the way, um, for these double stacks, for the three unit cars, I only have one wheel set that has a resistor. For the five unit, uh, I have two wheel sets with resistors. And then if they're single well cars, I just have one uh, wheel set. So generally it's one wheel set per car, uh, not all four. Uh, but as it goes through, you can see all three uh, blocks are continually lit up. And then again, that's why the delay, the four second delay is important because if you had some, a uh, little bit of problem with uh, dirty wheels on some of the cars where it goes off for a second, it will stay on on the dispatcher's panel. And now you can see the DPU left the curve bowl block. So after a few seconds, that goes out. And then as it leaves the uh, control point, it goes out also. So far I've done uh, both coal trains, both uh, uh, ethanol tank car trains, and uh, both stack trains. Uh, but I have all the manifest trains to do, so I still have quite a few to do. It does not take long. I can do a train, a full train of 36 cars in about an hour, uh, maybe hour and a half. Uh, so it doesn't take long at all. I uh, hope this was helpful. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, next week uh, we'll have a, uh, another update as we continue to expand. I wanted to show this here at the end because we are going to get the scenery here pretty soon. I think uh, next week you'll see some more track being put down at the uh, Evanston Yard and at West Vacal. So that's what's up next. Thanks so much for watching. Everybody have a great Sunday and a great week. Take care.